Hello everyone and welcome to lucky episode number 13 of series 2 of uh, Lawrence Blaze Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And as you can see here, we've been busily at work making uh, getting the science up and running. So, let's let's work backwards through what I've been doing here. So I've built up a I built up a science park here, and this is currently being loaded largely we're bringing over all of the basic sciences. So these are the ones that come up from Norvis. We've got the uh, red, green, grey, uh, blue, and gold. Then we've got the uh, the plus science, the optimization tech cards that are being made up in orbit, along along with the space science, the utility, and the production sciences. And I might have got the last two the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter. They're all being fed up here to a um, uh, to a science dome that's being a uh, science sphere actually more than a dome that's sitting there spinning away merrily and this is this is working quite effectively because if you look there over there on the right you can see we've got a research speed of a plus 190 percent thanks to this beacon down here that's packed full of tier 2 speed modules and also it's get a got a productivity boost of almost 58 percent because we've filled it up with uh, the tier 3 productivity modules which are currently the best that we've got now we have observed that fairly soon we should be able to make uh, tier 4 productivity modules even if we can't already no we can make them already um, we just need we just need vitamin and extract and um, mark is over on a planet where that comes from so it shouldn't be too difficult to bring a load of that over at some point and just at least bump us up to tier 4 productivity modules so that'll get us the um, a productivity boost of 10% of per module rather than 8% so that should take us up to about 60% uh, extra productivity on um, on top of an empty an, an empty research lab so this is going well this, this, is, this is working quite nicely however we are going to want to bump up these speed modules because the more uh, productivity modules we put in here the lower the more the speed will be dragged down and therefore the more speed modules will need to drag it back up again and get it running at a sensible speed now, from previous experience, I know that we're probably not going to need more than about one or two of these labs. We could probably put in a second one here and have an insert of feed feeding straight over into it. In fact, let's 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 try that. Let's put those in, and then that that that'll allow us to, to to science twice as quickly, at least until we start to run out of science packs, which, to be honest, we very nearly have, and I'll touch on that in a moment. But first, there's how we're getting the science packs over here, because this is right over here. This is our um, science area way over on the other side of the uh, other side of the world from where it was being done before over here so in order to allow that to work we've got these belts coming across here and they're going they're doing the stand underground 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 thing because this is going to be the main bus of the science area and those are being brought in from a station here. So what we've got on this, we've got we've got the two, two parter here. We've got the, the drop off station here and pick up station at the other end. That's the, um, <laughs> which will come as precisely surprise, which will come as no surprise whatsoever. That's how these things work. So the way we've got this one working is the train will turn up with a load of science packs, ideally some of each of them. It'll unload as much as possible because along here, these, if we turn the alt mode back on again, you can see all of these are filtered to the specific types of science packs. So they're going to unload into all of here and then, then these unload onto, onto, the, uh, on, onto the system over here. Um, and, what, and then we're here, we've got this um, constant combinator set up with minus one of each of the science packs. So at the moment, if we look on here, you can see there are arbitrary numbers of most of the science packs. However, you'll notice that the last one, the uh, turquoise you want that's the utility science and that says minus one because we've run out of those completely in, in the system here so there's no end to them not being any pouring out here so all these are wired together and then that minus one on there is passing that over so this this uh, decider combinator is then looking at that and going okay so something is less than zero so i'll output one t so you can see there is also a t on the network over here this station is reading the train contents and sending to train. So when a train turns up with a load of science packs in it, it will read the contents of the train and so even if this and uh, and um, add it to the total here. So we'll then know the total of what's in the, the warehouses and in the train. Uh, and if and if that gets down to to zero for any of them, then this minus one here will be sent will send a T through to the train, and the train will depart. So if we go over here and have a look at the train, uh, it's this train down here. Look at its instructions. You can see at the science drop. It will leave if the circuit condition says T is. Uh, oh, that should be an and on that one as well. There we go. Uh, if the circuit condition says T is is equal to one, so therefore something has run out. I also had to put in a um, a delay on it because it turned out when the train turns up, it takes a couple of ticks for the um, information about what's in the train to propagate through the circuit network and be included in the in in the sums. So it was turning up and going, oh, the station's already uh, we're already empty of something. I better clear off again. So I put in this 10 seconds here as a minimum stopping time, which give it time to do a bit of unloading and for the for the, uh, for the signals to propagate around the network, and that allows it to stay there. I also put in a, um, a one second of inactivity, and I'm trying to rem remember why I did that. 
I'm honestly not sure. Uh, there was a reason I put that in towards the end of the stream, but I can't remember why I did that, and that feels kind of wrong. Then, at the other end, the train will sit here, and if we look in the train, you can if we look in the train properly, you can see that it's split up between the um, different types of science cards, uh, science packs. So each of these has got is, is filtered to only allow that one particular type of science into the into those slots. So, so which is why this train hasn't just filled up with red cards. It's it's waiting for some more of the uh, of the energy science ones to be delivered and to go into there before it before it'll actually go anywhere. Similarly, in the other wagon, we've got we've got it slowly filling up with production and utility, and it's completely full of the other ones because they're quicker to make. So the idea is that it will sit here for admittedly rather a long time until it's picked up enough of these science packs and then it will go off to go and get the um go off to deliver them and and um, and then come and then come back when when uh, they've, they've all been used up so the system does work quite well we had some, some minor issues you can see we've, got, we've still got some shortages of some of the science packs you can see the uh, production and utility science coming in along here space coming in along here so that's not actually a there's enough there's some in here but there's not very many they've mostly been loaded into the train the same with the uh, with the optimization uh, plus tech cards but mostly we're really, really short of the energy science. And I should probably, I guess I should have a look at why that's happening. Even though this is very much temporary and will be ripped up sooner or later. I think it's just because this is a slow, slow system. Uh, so here we are waiting for some significant data. Here we are making the significant data, eventually, when we've got enough insights. And it's just, yeah, it's just a bit slow around here. So that's why it's, that's why it's, um, it seems to be just sitting there. But eventually it will produce... 2,000 energy science packs, and they'll be fed up to here. Um, although by then, maybe we'll be, do th be doing things a little bit differently. So for now, I've, I've been running the train manually because there's not enough of all of the other, there's not enough of all of the packs for it, to, for it to run nicely and automatically. So that's transporting all of the science pack cards over from here. Most of those are being, being brought up from Norvis, as you can see. We've got all of the all of these ones flowing along here, the Norvian ones flowing out along here, and then up here they are being merged. They're, they're being combined with all the other all the other tech cards that are required. So that's that's all of that. So that, that's that's essentially bringing all of that round to here is, has has meant we are in exactly the same place we were before. We've got all these data cards being brought up from Norvis. We've got these ones being made in space, and we're feeding them into a into a science lab. However, the reason I've brought it over here is because this is going to be my new science area, and this is going to be the area that takes in all of the inputs from everywhere else and to, all of the catalogs from everywhere else and turns them into science packs. So if we look down here, we have this train sitting here uh, somewhat lonely, um, it's just, it's just sitting, sitting there at the moment because it's, it's waiting for the Astro catalog pickup station to be ready for the train to come in again. So that then eventually when it's when it's ready, it can come, when the station down here is ready, it can come down here and grab some more. Now this seems to have, I oh know it is running, it's just running a bit slowly. Okay, that, that's fine. I mean, you, you can see these machines here spinning and animating away. So they are in fact running at the moment. They've got all the cards they need. They're, they're, they're okay, they're just a bit slow. So at some point I'm going to need to speed that up. But that's not what I'm talking about right now. This train will swing up here carrying all of those um, catalogues and then it will unload them here. And this eventually is going to be set up in the same way that this train is set up. So we're unloading all of the different things from here and all of the different things from here. But up there it's science cards, down here it's going to be the various different catalogues. So we've got the Astro Catalog 1 coming out here and it's going to run as long as there's less than 2,000 in here. And then they're going to be passed out along here and go along the bottom side of this, um, of this belt all the way along here. And the mergers and the splitters over here are there to merge the output from the two different um, two different warehouses. I might change this in the future and have catalogs one and two in one warehouse and catalogs three and four in the other warehouse. I haven't really decided yet. This is still a little bit a little bit uh, specking it out, making it up as I go along because well, it's a new design. It's a different way of doing things from ways I've done this before. So yes, it's going to be quite different and um, and well, things 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 may or may not work out. But eventually. We're going to have this working in basically in the same way that the train up here does. It'll bring over all the different things, and then when one of them runs out, it'll go back to going get some more, bring them all out, and so just keep, keep everything going. So these ones that are filtered on trees at the moment will eventually be catalogues 2, 3, and 4. Exactly the same down here, 2, 3, and 4. And that means those catalogues will then flow out along here. Uh, okay, they go up there as well, but mostly, the firstly, they go along here to be turned into the insights. Because as you can see from the diagram here, and from what you may remember from the 0.5 run, uh, you take in catalogues and turn them into insights. You then take the insights, so they flow out of here, and they'll, 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 they'll go um, and they'll go up here, and also up here. Insights then go up into these machines where we turn them into significant data cards. Then the significant data is fed back down here, and that plus the insights plus the catalogues and some beryllium plates are then all fed into these research servers and turned into the actual science packs that we need. So it's quite a long and involved process to, to take the, the catalogues that flow in 
um, and then turn them in, turn them into science packs. And each of these stages will eventually allow for, for improvements. So at the moment, we're using the uh, first generation uh, tier one processing for making the insights. That means it takes in catalog one and produces a number of insights. So if we have a look in here, you can see we've taken the Astro, Astro catalogs, we've taken one of those and we produce two insights. We also have the option later on um, of taking in tier one and tier two uh, catalogs and producing eight insights or one, two, and three, and producing 18. So as you can see, as you go on to later and later recipes, you get more and more efficient outputs, but you need to have more and more ingredients to go in to, go to, to make them. So in the future, we'll be able to make a lot more insights by, use, by simply by chucking in more different types of catalogs and, and, and making it that way. Similarly, up here at the moment, we're using the recipe where you bring in a, a one astro insight and it produces significant data. So again, we can look in here at the... Um, at the recipes you take in 36 astronomic insights you produce four significant data that's not very many for the amount of effort we're going through to make those uh, so that's a bit pathetic but it would be nice if we could then advance on to the slightly better recipes like this one where you take in astrometric and energy insights together and that produces six in significant data so you're, you're still putting in the same total of 36 insights but you're getting instead of getting four data out you're getting six data out and then there's similar ones with the other other tier t other um, t t tier for the tier twos then you get onto the tier three where you take in 12 of each and that produces eight so as you can see the more of the more and more of these you use the more and more and more efficient it gets and the more the more significant data you get out for each insight you put in and because the insights are so expensive to make this is really really valuable it can make an enormous difference to the amount of science you can do then, as I say, you get, you, you get your um, insights and your significant data through whatever recipe you like, and then it comes in down here. And each of the, and this this is the tier one at Astro Science, as you can see. Um, and then the tier two will take processed beryllium. So it'll maybe maybe it'll be the um, the aeroframe rods or something like that. And then it'll be maybe the aeroframe scaffolds, and then it'll be the bulkheads or something like that. So each each tier will will, will require a slightly more complex type of. Um, of beryllium, slightly more processed beryllium, and then we can feed them. So we'll have, an, so we'll have more and more and more of these uh, doing the different different recipes. Maybe some more doing the tier one once we've got a bit more input for it. We shall see about that. And then yes, we should be able to then feed out a nice steady stream of science that'll come up here, go around here, and into the bottom of the uh, in, into the bottom of the labs. So the way this is set up now, we're going. To, this is going to be Astro is going to be in here as as it as as you can see. Then we're going to have science packs flowing up and down of this bus section and also this bus section because there's going to be quite a lot of them. The coolants are going to take up this bus section. Eventually there'll be three pipes I think going up here. Or is it four in the end? So there's warm, uh, cool, cold and very cold. So I, we, I, we haven't needed any warm, any sorry, any cool yet. We've only needed, we've only needed cold. But later on we'll certainly need the ultra cold. Uh, I don't know whether we're going to need cool as well. We shall, we shall see. But there is room up here to run all of those if we need them. And then this belt here is going to have the insights flow down it uh, to come in here to be made into the significant data, and then also have the significant data flow up and down it. So there's four belts across. There's room for four across here for the four different types of insights, and then a fifth one for the significant data. So there's going to be enough there. Over here, we've got we've got in, these two belts will be sufficient for all the astro science, and then coming down from above, we'll have one, two for two for energy, two for material. Uh, and then over here, I guess, we'll have two for bio and two for the other one, uh, two for deep space. So that should be enough for all of the science packs to come down here and then just be all be poured into the, to into the top of this um, uh, in into the top of this thing uh, thing over here. Now, as you can see, because we've put all these inserters in along here, we now have both of these machines have now have a number, a quantity of research packs in them. This one doesn't have the modules at the moment. That's something that needs to be done. In fact, I can I can do that just like that, and now the bots will come over and do, deliver them. But we've run out of the um, we've run out of the astro science, and we also seem to have run out of the turquoise one, the um, well the utility science. I say run out. We've still got 170 of them, but we've completely run out of the astro science. So yeah, that's going to slow things down there a bit. But you know, we can. Um, uh, once we've made some more astro science, we'll be able to get that up and running again. The astro science is, as 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 we touched on before, is all being made down here, and this is all running very nicely. I've not really changed anything down here, um, apart from making sure the station works, which it it does, uh, and making plans to do the station differently in the future, uh, which it hasn't doesn't do yet because I haven't done that. But eventually, we'll switch this over to this. This one will be taking all four types of um, of, of astro catalog and loading them all onto the same train because that seems like fun. I, we ha I haven't done sushi trains before, really, so this would be a apart from for the um, 
uh, outpost trains, which is a, a tutorial video on if you haven't seen it already. Uh, so, so doing it like this is going to be different and interesting. And I always like to do things in different and interesting ways. That's sort of it's sort of the, the, what makes Factorio fun. Um, this is all still cooling. Yeah, nothing. nothing I don't think I don't think I did any, any other work down down here in this area. I did do a bit of work clear over on the other side of the base, though. So let's go. Let's go back over here. Uh, we had we had some issues over here. So one of them was that we, <laughs> the, one of the problems, or a, a problem we 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 found with this um, single massive disposal belt system we've got running. It, it works really really nicely, except if one of the things backs up. So in this case, it was the um, it was the memory card, the junk data card recycling that was that was backing up. That then jams absolutely everything else. So the whole system locks up, and you have to go and you find out what's been what's caused the problem, and you fix it, and then it all takes a little while to flow back through and start getting back into un, un, under control. Again. Whereas if you do all of them individually and separately, then if one of them breaks, the rest of them still carry on working. However, I suppose on the flip side, this means that if one of these does break, it makes it a lot, lot quicker to actually notice that things are going wrong. <laughs> um, we do seem to be still making thermofluid quickly enough, which is nice. So that's 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 still, that's still working, even with only three radiators up here. But I've now put in instead of the sort of three or two or how many uh, supercomputers I had reformatting memory cards here before, I've now got seven of them. So it, I just I just added a few more on fairly arbitrarily, and they are now capable of dealing with the rate that the cards are coming through. So that's nice. Also had to um, improve the rate we were crushing barrels at because uh, down here we had a lot, a lot, a lot of barrels being produced by these systems. And as as you can see here, we're actually we are we've run out of petroleum gas, which is annoying. Um, I don't know why that's not being shipped up. But that's something to have a look into. Um, but yeah, we had problems with the uh, the heavy oil and the like, lube. We now which, because of the too too many barrels, but that is now sorted. The barrels can now be passed along here. They'll get dumped down the down the disposal belt, down into here. And I fixed this one by putting speed modules in these uh, in these recycling facilities. So they're now all running at plus 120 percent speed. So just over twice as fast as they were before. And that does seem to be enough. We are getting through all of the uh, all of the barrels that come through, um, and crunching them down into in, in, into steel to be reused elsewhere. Um, I am a little bit bothered about that um, about that uh, petroleum gas. Actually, let's uh, let's have a brief diversion because we don't do those often enough. I I, I almost never get distracted. <clears throat> uh, and have a look down here in the in the big oil area where it's very very dark. Let's turn some lights on. There we go. Um, okay, it just fired. Why is there what's there a shortage of? Is there a, there is a shortage of petroleum gas down here. That's an interesting problem to have. Oh, it's because it's being pulled out. It's because a train has, has turned up and has taken a load of gas. And so we're now trying to fill these tanks up as quickly as we can. Um, and that means it's sort of being prioritised into these tanks rather than down this pipe here. So maybe I should put in a pump to take it, to pull it away from here. But I don't think there's room for that. No, there is not room for that in there. Um, however, of course, once these tanks fill up again, the system will start running as normal. But... The other possibility is to pull the uh, the gas supply for this out of the uh, out of the tank up here. So I could get rid of I could get rid of uh, that and then put in this like this, and then there will be plenty a plentiful supply of petroleum available. And these are all being kept balanced across here by that pipe and that pipe and that pipe. So it won't it won't cause any problems there, and and it'll make the whole system a lot more reliable. I could even put in pump here like that to to because because this I feel like this should be this should be kind of prioritized a little bit more highly so if I do this then we'll be pulling it from these which are much more likely to have some petroleum gas available in them uh, and and it'll be pumped out so it'll be a priority down here we'll keep this full I could even put in a tank down here if I wanted to but I think that's probably overkill but this should once once that's been built that will increase the rate that the uh, the priority and therefore the rate that these these barrels are coming through at okay back up in space Right. One of the other things we've done is um, lo is in theory loading um, copper and iron ingots into the into the rocket that comes up and lands here. Uh, that should land here. Then it should unload these over here, and we should then be making the copper and the iron from ingots and feeding it back in over here into back into the into the warehouse. So that should stop the uh, the copper coming up by delivery cannon, as it as you can see it doing clearly doing here. So that's um, that's weird. Uh, I don't know why that's failed, so let's go and have a quick investigation on that one, on that point as well. So down over here, and this is a thing that Tristan has done, so this is all, all uh, somewhat beyond me, but I'm sure he's done something very useful over here. But in theory, this is supposed to bring in the um, resources whenever they're required to either of these ships. So up here, maybe we don't. No, we do have a we do have a train here with copper ingots in it, so that should now come down here, drop those all off in this station, and they should then be passed over. 
uh, down an appropriate one of these belts. I don't know how I don't know how the system works. I'll have to look into it a bit more and talk about it in tomorrow's video. But suffice to say, it doesn't seem to be working. So there's something for Tristan to work on next time. The idea behind that, though, is that it's supposed to take a bit of the strain off the off the uh, delivery cannon facilities that weren't really shipping up the copper fast enough. So we thought, yes, okay, rockets aren't theoretically they're not quite as good really but in this particular case i think it might be worth just having the, having all this stuff brought up by rockets just in order to i don't know uh, get get the throughput up and to allow us to bring the ingots up as well so yeah this is not ideal but it is kind of it's, it's sort of at least dr kind of dribbling through and the reason we need all of this copper is because down here we're chewing through it at an absolutely immense rate in order to make the the, uh, the blank data cards that then flow out as you've seen before into the station over here. So we need huge, huge quantities of these. As you can see, there's there's only like a thousand in here. Uh, they're not being made as quickly as I would like, um, but that's down to the the shortage of copper at the moment. And these are going to be used in enormous quantities by all of the various different science areas that are making all the different all the different data all the different catalogues, and then also to a, to a smaller extent, a few of them will be potentially used in the science area as well. But I think mostly it's going to be just producing them. Um, so we do have some of them. Some of them do flow through, as you can see here. There's one on there. Some of them do flow through for recycling, and they flow through a lot quicker when we're actually making science packs properly. But we, we we do get a decent number coming through to be recycled. But we also get through quite a lot of them, so we need to make more. So this whole system over here has been has been expanded somewhat, as, as I showed you last week. And I've also fixed the problem we had with the uh, contaminated cosmic water. So you can now see this pipe is completely empty because the system is working. It's being pumped up through here, uh, all the way up to here, where I've put in an additional two cosmic water processing machines uh, and to be honest it wasn't the cosmic water processing machines that were the problem um, but I have also put in a, an extra feed down here and fixed all of the, the pumping issues we had before so at the moment we've got yeah we're pumping it up this way upwards here so this is always kept full and then we're letting it sort of trickle downwards to find its level with the with the tanks down here so it will always be so we can supply from these tanks or we can dump into the tanks depending on what's required and then a pump just pushing it down here to go into the into the, into the polishing areas another interesting problem i discovered was that i hadn't wired up i think it was the was it oh no it wasn't here somewhere else there was a, the uh, for the one of these recycling facilities i wasn't getting rid of the uh, contaminated bio sludge properly and i just hadn't noticed for ages because it was producing so little of it that it had taken several weeks to fill up just the pipes the couple of pieces of pipe i put on the output um but then eventually it jammed up and i had to fix that so that that but that's now that's now working i think that covers everything i've been up to in the last in the last session so i mean it was there was a lot of stuff going on here P building up this this research park even though it's not actually all that big and this bit down here is a direct copy and paste of what i'd already built for the uh, for the astro science building up just the stuff you can see on screen now actually took quite a long time and quite a lot of thinking so uh, it was the stream was mostly based around getting all of this built up and i'm quite happy with it now now it, it is it is working it's very very expandable it's going to be really easy to drop in more of basically just direct copies of this section uh, actually no this section because we'll need the station as well and another three of those to do all of the other three sciences. So I've, I've built it with the intention of being able to easily adapt it for the other science packs and easily expand it for the later astro science packs as well. So I'm quite, I am pleased with the design. I think it's going to work well. Um, I'm just also slightly aware that it's, um, uh, it took me quite a long time to build it. <laughs> And meanwhile, let's see, so while I was doing that, Mark has been getting started on, on doing biological science up here. As you can see, he has got a, a long way. Um, <laughs> yes, he's, he's made a nice large area of, um, of, tie, of, uh, of scaffolding to build on, and he's put in a station. So, I mean, that, that is a good start. You need, you need to start somewhere. More importantly, according to his um, done lists, he's made a couple more machines, I think up here. Yes, here we go. So these, this is the um, astrometrics facility I'd made for the, before. So now Mark has started building up here. He started making the uh, the Christmas trees. What are these? These are genetic facilities, aren't they? Uh, yes, the genetic facility Christmas tree things. And then up here, the grow facility, growth facilities that are sort of a, a kind of weird biological science space greenhouse thing that allow you to grow goop up in space and then, and then uh, perform science on it. So, as with many, many other th areas where we've been building these things up, he's got um, them going straight into red chests over here. So, when he, when he goes off and, and starts a build, the bots will come over, grab the things, take them away, build them up for him nice and quickly. And it's and he's fair, he's relatively close to here as well, so it'll be, it'll, it will be actually be reasonably quick to do that. 
Um, both of those will go into here eventually once he's got all the bits and pieces for them. Then over here, oh, oh right, he's making lamps. So he's got, um, okay, so he's got copper coming across here. That's a bit of a, okay, this is a little bit convoluted, but never mind. I mean, I, I'm not going to criticize because I've, I've made some convolutions, certainly made some convolutions myself in my time. Although actually looking at, Okay, so right, he needed the copper for make, to make the copper cables to make the to get to be added to glass and iron to make the lamps. So he's brought yeah, he's getting the iron from here. So he he did definitely need a belt going across from one side to the other, and he obviously decided to build it build the lamps over here rather than over here. But probably actually that's probably sensible because there are a lot more belts coming up this side. So there's a lot more to deal a lot more of these things to deal with if they're needed later versus. The, one, the relatively simple ones over here. So yeah, that makes sense. Making making the lamps because you need for, for making these things you need 400 glass, 100 lamps, and some miscellaneous bits and pieces which were already on the on the system from uh, previous builds. That's quite a lot of stuff, if I'm being honest. And then over here, the Christmas trees are probably going to be similarly crazy. Uh, okay, though they need nutrient vats, so I guess he's going to be pocket crafting those or trying to find up trying to find some other way of making them. Beyond that, it's 80 glass, which is quite a lot. But beyond, it's just it's just stuff. As the, these these are buildings. It almost it doesn't really matter when a building takes a lot of stuff to make it because you don't you don't make all that many of them compared to the number of say science packs you end up making. So what does he need for a nutrient vat? Is he going to be able to do any of that over here? Nutrient vat requires glass, iron plate. Fine, those are both just over here as he's demonstrated with this with this this system, and also nutrient gel. That's going to be the that's going to be the difficult one. Um, don't know where he's going to get that from. That is made from. Uh, oh, there's three recipes for it. You can make from coal, fertilizer, and for th three of the goops. We already have those goops, so that's possible. Um, he just needs coal and fertilizer somehow. Or he can do it from fertilizer, methane gas. He's got methane gas out on um, bio planet, so maybe I mean, transport that as a methane ice, I suppose. And then, yeah, that seems to be slightly more efficient because it uses. I don't know. Uh, no, it's slightly less efficient actually, because it uses more chemical gel. Oh, it uses a lot less bio sludge and a bit less cosmic water, so maybe that's better. Hard, hard to say really. Um, or you can get it out of barrels, but that's not, not particularly useful. Okay, so that's going to be an interesting one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how he's going to finagle that in over here, um, but um, good luck, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so that that nutrient gel is going to be a bit tricky. Maybe for the first few, we'll, we'll, we'll he'll get it handcrafted somewhere. Not handcrafted, sorry, crafted somewhere else, and then bring it over by hand, and then see how it goes from there. I don't know. That that's that's going to be a bit. That's going to be a slightly challenging one. Um, so that could be could be fun. <laughs> But those, that's that was his sort of that was that was his big thing in Norbit in the last time. He's also been expanding out the um, the, the the solar panel facilities as we, we've talked about before, and these are now producing plenty of power, even if Tristan is hogging virtually all the power with these uh, particle accelerators, which we should talk about uh, soon. <laughs> He's also played around with some of the supply numbers to ensure that we're getting up all of, enough um, scaffolding and solar production stuff. Right now on to Tristan, who has been. Let's see. His first thing he's been doing. He, he, he dealt with the uh, the power packs issues that I was talking about before. So apparently he's put in a buffer for that. I I, I have no idea. There is a buffer chest here that's going to collect briefly collect the charged power packs before it passes them out onto the onto the uh, belt system to go off to put into the trains. Um, and that's hooked up to this, which says will run if this is less than zero. So this is. I see. I think this belt of Oh, okay, right. The battery packs are now being brought up in this rocket, not the other rocket. So they'll be dropped off here and then passed down here. So yeah, we're limiting the number it's brought up to, to here, presumably, to uh, 2,000 of them. Then they're dumped down here. And if we have an insufficiency of them in, in the system in general, they'll then be passed around here, charged up and put out onto the network. But if we've got enough, then that'll be stopped. Okay, that makes sense. And then these from here, as we as we've looked at before, batteries the charge batteries flow up here. They'll go out to and then be passed out to any trains that require them, and, and they can just power the trains. The dead ones are dumped back onto the onto the bus, take them home, take them back to be recharged. Fine. Oh, okay. Tristan also mentioned he's been putting the uh, the copper and iron ingots, as I said down here. And there's a he says there is a problem. There's a problem with it at the moment with the train limits because one of the rockets isn't providing its rocket ready signal to the right place. So um, I guess that's something that's good. That's something you can sort out later. <laughs> He's also got lithium sulfur batteries. Ah, okay. So another, another, another thing coming up in the rocket from here is these lithium sulfur batteries, and that's those are going down here again for the power pack repairs. So sometimes when a power pack comes out along here, 
it then will try and charge it and it'll go a tip and break in half or the batteries in it will just won't, won't pass quality control should we say so at that point they get filtered out by this uh, splitter here passed up this way and coming along here where they get grabbed by these machines and put it and, and we put new batteries into the power into the power packs and that that means they can then be run back back around the whole thing again and and, and be re recycled and reused so we're being very economically very environmentally friendly here recycling everything we can don't look at that pollution output his other thing, I mean, this is all related actually, because this is energy. So we've been talking about energy and the batteries over there. Now we've got energy science up here, and all of this is apparently now in place, uh, with a little asterisk of, of warningness around it. So we've got, we've got the four machines along here that make the four types, the four types of memory cards. Those are all passing in up the, up to the, to the middle here, where we are making the, the tier one catalogs, and those are being passed out into a station. So at the moment, he's only got a single a station set up for single. Uh, Single catalogs. That's going to be that's fine. We'll, we'll we'll update that later as we um, as we as we uh, as as I basically when I finish the design off for the Astro, he can then make a copy of it over here for, for doing energy as well, and, and then everything will work nicely. Um, so the, there's but there's a bit of a problem here in that he's not getting anything through from this one because he doesn't have any blue clouds to play with. Uh, the other three, no, two of the others seem to be working. This one is. He is, you is also sad. Yes, you are also sad because you don't have any. You don't have any multispectral mirrors, right? So this is basically basically set up and working. One of the things he did do last time, which is kind of horrific, was um, put another split uh, output over here on the um, the the green circuit. And if there's more than 100 green circuits in here, then it'll pass them out along this belt up here and load them into this train. This train's sole purpose then seems to be to take them down to here and drop them off at one of these stations. I have no idea which. Um, but that then gets them into the system over here. They can, And he, that gets him green circuits over here for whichever science it is that requires them. Um, it's kind of a horrible way to bring them in, but then on the flip side, I find it hard to criticise because, to be honest, I don't know what he could have done differently and better. Because he can't ship them up by delivery cannon. Pretty much the only alternative would be to put in a rocket landing a facility, a rocket landing, and bring them up in that rocket. And that's also, I don't know, it feels a bit silly putting in a rocket for one thing when we're trying to get rid of them. So. Yeah, it's 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 kind of horrible, but it's it's horrible in the same way that bringing up all of these uh, fluids in barrels is horrible. It's it's not very nice, but we're going to have to deal with it for now and just keep in, and, and, and stick with it, unfortunately. <laughs> So yes, he's, he's nearly, nearly, got, nearly got it running. Apart from the um, apart from the ion stream that he's going to need to get that working. So over here, he has also built up this area, and this is doing all of the sort of all of the uh, the sort of plasma related things. So he's bringing in uh, chemical gel over here because, as you may remember from several weeks ago, I set up a chemical gel station uh, while I was going through doing the liquids because I knew it'd be useful elsewhere. So he's bringing that in along with a load of lithium that's coming up by delivery cannon. And that's that's being turned into uh, pl into plasma stream. Right, plasma stream is then coming down here. We can convert some of that into green clouds, proton streams, by mixing it with more lithium uh, in a particle accelerator. And down here, he can add it to rare metals, uh, which makes the ion stream, which we were talking about earlier. So that's then being passed down into this pipes over here and into the into the tanks. And so when this gets up to thirty thousand per tank, a train will come over, grab it, and take it away, and we can actually, and he can start making science from it. Down here, we're doing the, going to do the same sort of thing with particle stream, but at the moment we don't have material testing packs, and we certainly and we don't have sand available here either. So I think the material testing packs are going to be brought in by another train, or maybe they're going to be built here because this could be expanded out to be a sort of a, a miscellaneous stuff building area. So we might want to, we might build up the material testing packs here, or we might decide that actually shipping them around by train is going to be ridiculous. Um, for uh, for material science because material science gets through huge quantities of them and they don't stack very high so I think the best way to do this is probably going to be to have a uh, facility in with the uh, material science that makes massive massive quantities of the material testing packs and makes them, makes them both available on the train system and to um, and to the material science area so I think we'll pro I'm going to encourage us to do that because I remember this being a, a, a tricky problem last time uh, I, but I but I also imagine he's going to be putting in a facility here to make the uh, multispectral mirrors because those are used by quite a lot of things. They are uh, they used to make telescopes. I think I might be going to want them later for, for later parts of this science. Tristan wants them for um, they're needed in huge quantities for making the advanced solar panels, and I think and Tristan needs them over here for making the uh, one of these science packs. So we're going to want to have lots and lots of those available. So we're going to be making those in one central location and shipping them out to to everywhere that needs them. That's the, the wonder of having the, the space train system set up and running. 
and I think that brings us to the end of the video, pretty much. Uh, we've got so we've got the uh, we've got all the, the streams being made over here, all the all the various types of clouds. That's working uh, nicely, but it, it, it sort of work in progress. We still haven't ripped out this this area. Uh, we will be more or less as soon as as uh, Tristan finishes off his um, uh, gets his 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 energy science up and running. In which case, at which point I'll have to reprogram a train a little bit. We are debating bet uh, a little bit over whether we should whether we should remove the move these science packs off somewhere else. I don't think we need to, to be honest, because they are working perfectly well here. Uh, they're ticking away quite happily. We might need to bring in um, thermofluid because I took out, I stripped out the machine that was making it, uh, which was in here, because I needed the space to run these belts through. But there's quite a bit in these buffer tanks here, and it would be quite straightforward to put in an additional train station to, ha uh, to have it drop off the, um, the, thermo uh, the warm thermofluid around here somewhere. Pipe it in. We already have an additional train up here dropping off the memory card, so it's get dumped in, onto, onto, in, uh, into the top of the system here where they'll rattle through and then go out along here. I have noticed that we've run into a bit of a... It's not a, ser a serious problem yet, but when a rocket lands hit on the la landing pad here, there is a massive quantity of stuff in it that gets passed across into here by the inserters. And that tends to... has a bit of a habit of filling this whole system up a bit and then stopping the, um, th these memory cards being passed through. So we do have a bit slightly limited throughput. Um, we get into the point where the bus is starting to struggle a little bit <coughs> if we ask too much of it. Um, because well, it's, it's just got a little bit on, a little bit big, uh, and we can we can we can sort of work with that to an extent. And but that might be a, that might be a thing that it tells us eventually we need to move some of these things off the bus in order to just free up capacity essentially for and then have the bus be just for built for this sort of building. Um, it isn't a problem yet, but at some point in the future it might become one. So uh, we shall see how we we shall see how we get on. Uh, it is a, a thing we might need to update. Right, so oh, and, and Tristan's put in a, um, a train building area down here to allow us to, well, build trains basically. Um, and I, I, I imagine these are here for copy paste purposes. So when you send, when you when you realise you sent off your fluid train, you go, oh yes, I do need, I need another uh, fluid wagon for this. You can, you can build it up out of the out of the uh, the parts around here. Right, so that is um, that is all I have for you for today because I think just talking about what's been going on in Norbit is quite sufficient for one video, especially now that we're getting to the point where several of us are working up here. So it's there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening, a lot of things happening, and if I do say so myself, I think the um, I think the new science park was is is uh, is genuinely quite exciting. <laughs> Tomorrow I shall go over what's been going on on all of the uh, all of the actual planetoids, so down on the ground uh, by people who have been a little bit more grounded than I have. Uh, that'll be tomorrow's video. Then on Monday we should be back to stream some more. Uh, we're carry carrying on with the system here, so I should be building up more of the science to better deal with uh, Tristan's energy science. He's going to probably get energy science working. Mark will continue with biological science, but it takes. I, I, I think it's probably going to take him more than one stream to get that up and running, because it, it certainly took me more than one stream to get Astro up and running. Now I might not be quite as efficient as him, but it is quite. It is still quite a big job. Then on Wednesday I shall be back for another uh, XCOM stream. That's going well. Please come along to those. They're a lot. They're a lot of fun, and they're they're, they're even more sort of um, audience participation -y than the uh, than the normal ones. I think probably because I'm playing on my own, and it means there's, there's more opportunity to talk to people. So those are good fun. Um, Thursday there will be GTA videos, and Friday and Saturday, of course, we'll get back back round to the uh, the catch up videos again. Uh, as ever, please check out the channel sponsor. That's Trefoil.be, who will host your Factorio or Minecraft servers for you. If you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you'll get twenty percent off your first month as well. And I think that finally is going to be the end of the video. I have run out of things to advertise and things to talk about. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.